how's it going and today I'm going to show you how to create a photorealistic scene or sequence using HDRI and a CGI character blended together and I think it looks really cool and it's pretty easy to do and so I'm just going to walk you through that process right now. So to do it we're just going to go into games and I'm going to go to third person and I'm just going to call this HDRI 9 and go create and of course it's going to load everything up it takes a minute to do and what we're gonna do the the first thing we gotta do is we gotta load in some plugins so we're gonna have to go to plugins and we're gonna have to type in HDRI and then we're gonna have to look for the take recorder select that and then if, unfortunately we have to restart every time this seems to be the standard operating procedure now is that Unreal lies increasingly on plugins and then you've got to enable them every time you start the system. So, okay, so the first thing we want to do is basically clear this scene of pretty much everything in it. So there's two ways you can do it. One is to come over here in the outliner and hold down shift and then just go through and delete them like that, like this. This is one way to do it. I don't know that there's a much faster way to do it. If you get to where you don't like looking for everything, we're gonna keep everything except for this. So these are the walls right here. If you don't wanna go looking for everything, you can just hold down shift and select these items and get rid of them. And then all we want is the, and now if we hit play, there's our character and she's running around on the screen. But the problem, and I mentioned this before, I'll hit escape. The problem is, is that she's not filmable. This character is not filmable, so she's not really of any value to us. So we really, since we're using the third person template, we just want to basically get rid of her. And what we're going to do is just, there's a camera filming her. So we're going to commandeer that camera and get rid of her. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and add a character on here that is filmable. And so we'll come into characters, we'll go to mannequins, we'll go to animations, we'll go to Quinn, and there's four preloaded animations, and we'll just drag her onto the scene. And put her as close to the player start as you can, and if I hit play, she should be right next to the other character. So now, to get to the main thing that's driving this third person character, we go to third person, and blueprints, and double click this. This blueprint is really what's driving that third person character. We don't need to know all this. We can just go to viewport. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on the mesh and come down here to rendering. And this is where you we just make her disappear. She spoke not well of somebody and so we made her disappear. Now on this camera, we have this and we want to just, let me just show you real quick. I'll compile and save this and go back to third person. Hit play. I just want to show you what I'm doing. So if I, I can run around the scene now, she's gone. But notice our angle is, as I'm flying around here, and this doesn't really matter to a certain extent, but it does as far as like getting your positioning in the scene and getting, experimenting with things. But notice how high our, our camera is. Let me hit escape. And the other thing is the camera's moving really fast. So let me escape this and turn down my camera speed. But we're coming in at too high of an angle. That's the issue I'm having. So we're gonna go back here and we're gonna drag this camera a little closer and then we're gonna drag it down a little bit. And then by hitting spacebar, I'm just gonna rotate it up about 10 degrees and we'll compile and save that. Now, if I go back into the third person, I got a much, I think a lot better angle to, to see things. Okay, that's the kind of the angle that I want to be at. And if you don't like that particular angle, you can go in and correct that. So now I'll hit escape to get out of that. Now the last thing I want to do is I'll click on this ground plane and I want it to again disappear. So make sure I'm on it, the cube. Come down here to rendering and we'll just make that invisible. So now we're almost done. All we have to do is pull up our HDRI plugin and I come over here and search classes and go HDRI, I can just drag it onto the scene now. And of course it doesn't come in at the right position, so making sure that I'm clicked on it, I can come over here on its location and just zero out everything, zero, zero, zero. We could pretty much just film her as is right now, but you'll notice that I want to say if this is on maybe the Z or it's stretched. And so you can try playing around with the size a little bit 
it's going to change things in the background a little bit. You can try messing around with that. You can also try messing with the projection center. And also, if you don't like what you're seeing in the background, you can come over here on the rotation on the Z and spin around in the scene too. The, so, but we still have this wonkiness of the ground going on. So to fix that, we'll come over here to advanced and we'll go use camera projection. And then all of a sudden, everything looks great. So you've got a CGI character in the scene. The only thing is maybe the lighting doesn't line up 100%. So a couple things you can do about that is one is you can drop the intensity down a little bit. And then you can also come up here and play around with the directional light and mess around with the rotations and darken it up. And you can see her shadow moving. So it almost looks like an overcast day where she wouldn't be casting that much of a shadow. And if you just wanted to create some unmotivated lighting, you could just play around with it too and just have her being lit up by who knows what mysterious source it is. But I think we pretty much want to get rid of her shadow kind of to match the overcastness of the scene. And then maybe at that point, go back to the HDRI and maybe adjust the intensity a little bit more. But it gets you in the ballpark. You know, so maybe bring up the intensity a little bit more, like something like that. And then that's pretty much it. So now all we want to do is just film this. So all we have to do to do that is click here on the sequencer, click here on the camera. And now this puts us into the perspective of the camera. Now there's widgets around on the scene. So to get rid of those, you can hit G2. And uh, wait, I'm in the camera view, so hold on. Let me click back to the content browser and hit G. Click in this scene here. I thought I clicked on the, go back to characters. Let me click on something in the scene and hit G. Yeah, get rid of all those widgets. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the sequencer, go back onto the camera. When it says pilot active, I can use all my usual controls to zoom in, to zoom out. And you can see what's happening is she's actually moving, see? And that's why this has to be a uh, static shot. Now we've got this, this lettering over there. If that's bothering you, you can just come over here and go to edit and just delete that whole thing. Okay, and now we've got, let's say this is what we want as our shot. Then all we have to do is get her into focus. But let's say, so let me come over here and I'll click and create a, a keyframe. And then I'll just click and drag to play with the focus. So maybe I want her out of focus, like let's say right there. And then I'll click and drag the playhead down to here. And now I'm going to drag her into focus. And I'm just eyeballing her. I'm just going by how she looks on my screen. Now if I come down here to these controls and I go forward and I hit play, there's our shot. And it looks great. I mean, she pretty well matches the, the lighting in the scene. The one thing I, I realize you can also do is if you click on the directional light and it has a light color, you can click on it, grab this eyedropper, and then come over here to, oops, come over here, come on and click somewhere in the scene to get a better color of the light. That's another thing that you can do to blend her in. So right there, I'd say she looks pretty well in the scene. I wouldn't know that she wasn't in the scene with the way she looks right there. Okay, and then once we're happy with that, we just click this clapboard and then we pick a folder to put our sequence into. So I'll just go to something here on the desktop. I've got a folder here, just pick that folder, select folder, and then we'll put this out as a PNG sequence. And we simply, and I'll have compression at the highest quality, which is 100, and just go capture movie, save selected, and it's gonna render out our sequence with her actually in idle animation. And that's it, that's it. So, but this is only for a locked shot right now. I'm experimenting with how to pin things down in the scene so that we can also move the camera. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care and have a great day.